place called Gobekli Tepe. And I have a text reading in Genesis that goes into detail about the ark animals and different things. And how the images at the Gobekli Tepe site are entirely consistent with one historical event. Not only do we have all the sunken cities all around the world, not just near coastlines, but deep in the ocean, like the Yanaguni Monument, or high up in the highest navigable body of water, Lake Titicaca in South America, that show at one time there were places that are built incredibly with massive faces underwater now. And yet these same atheists and evolutionists often give us a timeline that is in no way consistent with this pre-flood civilization. You know what does? The Bible. The Bible and other records provide us with a, a description of what was taking place before those cities bit the dust or got flooded. So let me bring up that thumbnail. And here you can see again, I'm trying to make it more clear, partially anyway, make it a little bit more. You can look up Gobekli Tepe on your own. I highly recommend you do. Look at it. Look at the stone on the left. Here you have cattle type creatures. Here you have creatures of the field. Here you have birds. Over on the right, you have more birds in a reproductive hatchery going through a developmental phase in some kind of containment area of a building or boat, right? And below it, look at what you have. You have scorpions, you have snakes, you have turtles. There are spiders on the other side of the same stone. Like it's marking out different levels, right? One level here, one level here. Here you have the birds that are hatching, that are reproducing, right? Because for Noah to gather together all the animals the way the Bible says, he would need time. And the Bible gave him, there's plenty of time in the biblical record to show that he could have done this. 40 or more years. Where did he keep all the animals? I believe he kept them right here at Gobekli Tepe. Look at the middle image. It's an overhead view of all these circular holding pens. That these stone monuments, these massive monoliths, mark out the exact type of creatures. Birds, reptiles, cattle, creatures of the field. Everything but fish and ocean creatures, which you wouldn't need in a flood, right? They're right here. They're not only right here. They're shown to be reproducing in different stages of development so they would know where to put them. They've dated the structure to about 12,000 years ago, but that's based on their dating of, of, of charcoal or wood fragments that could be of trees that were older and then cut down and used to burn at the time or for different posts, but also because it was buried completely in sand. They've been digging this up by hand since the 1990s. Well, what moves sand? I don't, they, they come up with the craziest ideas about why it was buried, which is really no idea at all, right? I believe this was buried by the flood. What else could have moved that much earth to bury a place like that? Why would they bury a place like that after going through all the trouble to erect after carving massive stone monuments and engraving them with different images of the exact same creatures described in the Bible that Noah preserved in the ark? This is only a few hundred miles from where they believe the ark landed on Ararat. I don't know how much more of a reality you need than this. And if you do, I have it. 
sunken cities all around the earth. And we have people that question us about the old earth and claim that the flood story of all things disproves the Bible. You know what it disproves? You don't know the Bible. You don't have a clue of the evidence that we do that is evidence of the Bible's story of what happened. Because there's really no other explanation, is there, for how this could have happened? Or why? What, were they just erect, spending all this effort and time in a Stone Age environment to mark out different creatures and holding areas? What, was it like a big zoo? And they just came and everyone walked around and observed creatures that they could see too? I don't think so. That doesn't fit the history of this planet. You know what does? A flood. A flood and a story about someone who survived that flood with all these animals and insects and birds. When the God of the Bible destroyed that earth. And that's why when the Bible talks about Noah and his faith, You've got reality all over the place.